Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Fabian Calvo, founder and president of the Node House and creator of the Resourceful Real Estate Academy here with another important real estate tip that I think is really, this is actually the key, I believe, to being a successful real estate investor if you're going to be someone who's going to buy and hold real estate. Remember, you have to decide up front. I mean, you know, you could pivot and you can change, but I think it's important going into any asset class, but specifically real estate, you want to buy and hold and rent properties, you want to buy and flip properties, you just want to be somebody who does simultaneous closings and, and does no money down transactions. All of them are great. There's no right or wrong. You just have to decide what works best for you. What are you set up for? What do you want to try first? You might want to say, hey, I want to do all of them. And that's fine too. But when you decide to buy and hold, and I hear this a lot from, from people that say, you know, I'm a long-term investor. I'm going to buy and I'm going to hold long-term. Boy, I heard that a lot back in 2004, 2005. And guess what? A lot of those investors, including myself to a certain extent, weren't so long-term because markets fluctuated and things rapidly changed. And so you had to pivot and you had to change your strategy overall because the markets changed. It's one of the reasons I, I advise continual learning over the asset class of real estate, over the all the other issues that affect the real estate market, the Federal Reserve, what the interest rates are, what the big banks are doing with respect to uh, the trickling out of properties that they might have on their balance sheets, what banks the FDIC is closing. All this information I think is important for a well-rounded real estate investor. Now, if you do decide to buy and hold, the key for that to work out Right? Because again, you make your money when you buy, right? And, and that's the old adage. So if you find a real estate deal that's worth $100,000 uh, and you're able to buy it for 50, well, when you bought the deal at 50, you just made $50,000 in equity. So you made your money when you purchased. Unlike people that say, well, I'm going to buy it because I think five years from now, it's going to be double the price. I mean, listen, if you have that type of money to throw around and that's your investment strategy, you know, it might work out, right? If you're, for example, some of these uh, markets, and I'm not telling you that's a strategy you should implement. That's probably like in the one percentile of people that do implement that strategy, and I'll give you one quick scenario, is people that buy in high-end markets. You have a lot of problems taking place in Europe, for example, right now. People that don't know where to put their money because banks are failing in Europe. So a lot of that wealthy money is going to high net worth neighborhoods and areas where high net worth real estate is located, high, high value assets like Beverly Hills, Malibu, California, certain parts of London in London and some of the big other big uh, cities as well. So, you know, if I, if I think that bank failures will continue in, in, in Europe and I buy real estate, let's say in Malibu, because I can afford it, right? And I can dish out two million for a home. Is there a likelihood that property will be worth more because there's only there's a lot of capital trying to buy real estate in the in only in the market where there's only so many properties? I think you get my point. But again, back to what we need to focus on. If you decide to be a long-term holder of real estate, and it comes down to no other thing other than property management. Property management is absolutely key, and you need to decide: Do you want to outsource your property management? And if you do, here are the things to look out for. The first is, how long has that person worked in the area? Have they just started working in the area or have they been working in the area for a while? Because if they've been there for a while, the likelihood is the word's gotten out in the community that, hey, this person um, rents apartments or this person can get me an apartment or, hey, I rented an apartment from this property manager, call them, they have inventory. So how long has that property manager been in the area? The second thing is, is that what's their Better Business Bureau? What, do, you know, what does Angie's List say about them? What are, what are other investors saying about that property manager? Make sure you talk to their clientele, specifically maybe out of, out of state owners. Like, you know, I invest a lot in Florida, for example. There's a lot of out of state owners that, that uh, own real estate in Florida but don't live here. Talk to their clientele. What does their clientele say? They should have at least half a dozen people that can say, yeah, look, this person's great. Um, you know, I get my monthly reports on time. I get them by the 10th. Uh, they collect all the rents. They're good at, you know, providing my tenants with the, you know, with, with the service that they need, et cetera, et cetera. So there are referrals. They need to give you good referrals. You also need to find out, like I said, how long they've been on the job. And the third thing is, is that they need to be hands-on. 
And by hands-on, they mean that they need to live close to where your asset's located. If they live an hour away, chances are they're not going to be able to get up and go show an apartment at 5 o'clock when someone's driving by the building. Um, by hands-on, I mean that they're constantly marketing your inventory, your apartment, or your home on Craigslist with you know, different rental programs that may exist with, for veterans or Section 8. Or that they and that they have signs up in front of the property. They're doing everything that they can to feel those uh, calls. And lastly, make sure that they qualify the tenant they're putting in. I mean, there's if you just Google, uh, you know, landlord tenant verification or landlord tenant background checks or background checks for tenants, there's a multitude of companies out there that you can use. Make sure they're using one of those companies that they're taking an application fee, that they're running a full, uh, not just a state uh, background check, but a nationwide background check to make sure they're not a convicted felon or a, you know, a sex offender, but also to make sure they haven't skipped out on their rent uh, and now they're moving uh, to your apartment and they're going to skip out on you or that they have you know, all kinds of uh, things in collections, right? Um, you know, we live in tough economic times. It's probable that tenants you rent to may have medical bills in collections. That's not really the end of the world. But if they can't pay their light bill or if they can't pay their cable bill, chances are they're not going to make a good tenant. Property management is key because they're the ones who manage your cash flow, right? So if, you don't, if you're not going to outsource it and you're going to do it yourself, you need to commit yourself to a mastery of educating yourself when it comes to, real estate, to uh, property management because it is absolutely critical. I'll be doing more free educational information on how you can become the best possible property manager, even if you just own one home or if you own several other homes uh, or apartments or whatever it may be. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, check out the nodehouse.us. You can also subscribe uh, to our newsletter if you haven't already. I'm Fabian Calvo. Thanks for watching. I'm out.